At Quebec Citadel, there was an air of satisfaction. The six-day conference was over. The two leaders of the Western world had agreed on all points. There was time for a social gathering when business was finished. Canadian Premier Mackenzie King entertained to supper the delegations and their entire staff, some hundreds of guests. Total victory quickly was the aim of the meeting at Quebec, a meeting which, as Mr. Churchill said, was held in a blaze of friendship. These are further pictures of the opening of the front in the south of France. Shots of equipment massed at Naples give a good idea of the strength of the 7th Army, which carried out this brilliantly successful operation. A combined operation by air, sea and land forces, British, French and American, the 7th Army's assault had for its most spectacular feature the attack by paratroops. As in Normandy, so in Provence, the airborne forces carried out their task with the utmost daring and efficiency. News of the 7th Army's lightning advance north and their link up with their comrades near Dijon is already history. Right from the landings onwards, prisoners have been taken in their tens of thousands to swell the ever-mounting total captured in the rest of France. Although General Patch's army is operating now hundreds of miles to the north, these pictures include scenes during the liberation of Marseille. Here's a typical sample of the welcome given to the Allied troops on their way through the great port. Marseille, second city of France, is the gateway of the natural road from the Mediterranean into the heart of France. It's from this great city that the French national anthem takes its name because it was popularized by the fervid singing of Marseillais soldiers as they marched on Paris, then as now in search of liberty. From Marseilles, the Allies swept north to capture Lyon, or Lyon. Here, sabotage by French patriots in aircraft and radio works had been right, and the Nazis had retaliated with ruthless reprisals. The first Allied forces entered the city to clear out remaining nests of German snipers, concentrated mainly in the hospital. As the Germans surrendered, fire broke out in the building. The patients were hurriedly and heroically rescued from a horrible death. Thus was the third largest city of France returned to the French people. Everywhere, the Allies stand in the full tide of victory. During the fifth year of this war, the German invaders have been driven headlong from Russian soil. These pictures show the Red Army's entry into a large Russian town vacated by the Germans.
As usual, the Nazis had displayed the utmost savagery, destroying, burning, pillaging. Scenes like these will be etched deep in the mind of every Russian for many years to come. The Germans have a heavy debt to pay. Russia has suffered grievously, but as her armies sweep on westward, they know that the Germans fight now only to gain time, to stave off inevitable defeat at the hands of the Allies. Mm -hmm. 